Today we're going to talk about membrane transport or transporting materials through a cell membrane. This is a picture of a cell membrane. Remember cell membranes can be found in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. This chart will be put into your notebook and you'll use this video in order to fill it out. We'll start with diffusion. Diffusion is an example of passive transport, meaning the molecules are going to move from an area of high concentration or a high amount of molecules. It's going to move towards an area where there is a low concentration or a low amount of molecules. So these yellow molecules, there's a high amount of them on the left, so they're going to move to the right where there's less of them. Diffusion can work both ways, so molecules can enter the cell membrane and molecules can also exit the cell membrane. So here, the yellow molecules, there's a high concentration on the left, so they're going to move towards the right. And here, the purple molecules, there's a high concentration on the right, so they will move towards the left. Diffusion is passive transport, so that means that there's no energy needed or no ATP needed for these molecules to move. The next example is osmosis. Osmosis is another example of passive transport, meaning no ATP is needed. The only difference between osmosis and diffusion is that osmosis deals only with water molecules. So here the blue dots are water molecules. There's a high concentration of them on the, on the left, so they're going to move towards the right where there's a low concentration of them. The orange dots would be um, solute molecules, so they're not water. So these, are, there's a high concentration on the right, so they will move towards the left where there is a less or low concentration of them. Facilitated diffusion is the same as regular diffusion. You're still moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The only difference is you're using a protein channel. So these molecules are too big to fit through the regular cell membrane as the molecules can in regular diffusion. Last, we have endocytosis and exocytosis. These are different from any of the three examples we've talked about because these are an example of active transport. Active transport needs ATP. So just remember that active starts with A, and it needs ATP. It requires energy in order for it to function. Also, the movement is opposite. So here, we're going from an area of low concentration, and we're moving towards an area of high concentration. Same thing over here. There's a low amount of molecules, and it's moving towards an area of high amount of molecules. So you can think about it like this. If you're at the bottom of a hill and you have to climb up to the top, that's going to take you a lot of energy. You're going from a low elevation to a high elevation. Um, endocytosis is when molecules enter the cell, and exocytosis is when molecules exit the cell. They are both an example of active transport, meaning they both need ATP in order to occur. These are three um, examples of diffusion or transport. There's hypertonic, which is right here, and that's when all of the solute moves out of the cell. So solute is following the water, following the water, the water is following the solute. So all the water is exiting the cell, all the water is exiting the cell, making the cell shrivel up or get small. That's hypertonic. Hypotonic in the middle is when all of the water enters the cell and makes the cell swell up, and it could actually make it blow or blow up. Over here we have isotonic, meaning there's the same amount of water entering the cell as there is exiting the cell. And let's just do a quick little review. Um, each letter is going to be an example of active transport or passive transport. And um, each letter is a, either facilitated diffusion, simple diffusion, endocytosis, or exocytosis. So take a minute and decide what letter A should be labeled, what letter B should be labeled, what letter C should be labeled, and what letter D should be labeled. All right, so let's take a look at the answers. 
Right here, we're moving from high to low, and we're not using a protein channel, so that's simple diffusion. Here, we're still moving from high to low, so high amount moving to low amount, but we're using a protein channel, so that's facilitated diffusion. Um, over here, we are moving from a low amount, so there's only two molecules here, and it's moving to an area where there's a high amount. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five molecules on this side. And you see this little lightning bolt with ATP. So that tells you that it needs ATP to function, meaning that it has to be active transport. And because these molecules are moving into, or because these molecules are entering the cell, it's endocytosis.